Okay, we're joined by our race winner tonight, his crew chief, and also uh, Steve D'Souza, who is vice president of nationwide operations for Joe Gibbs Racing, and uh, crew chief Adam Stevens. Uh, Kyle Bush, the winner tonight, driver of the number 54 Monster Energy Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing, and uh, quite a domination tonight. Kyle and I were talking on the way in. He, he did get a perfect driver rating of 150. But if there was some way to, to elevate that in the statistical world, I think the, this would be one race to do that. As Kyle leads all 250 laps, uh, this was the second time that you've done that in a nationwide series race. You did it out in Phoenix 2011 in February of 2011. Uh, this is your 67th nationwide series victory and uh, your fifth win here at at Richmond. So congratulations, Kyle. Did you know, you know, coming into tonight's race that you were going to be that dominant or did it, did it just come into you? Or how, how does a, a performance like that, how does that uh, play out for a competitor like yourself? Well, you know, you never really think you're going to be that good. But, um, you know, I knew that we had a good a good shot at being able to run well tonight and um, you know one better than what we've been here in the past few times unfortunately we just haven't quite hit on it like we did tonight uh, in those past races but um, you know the Monster Energy Camry was awesome um, you know Adam and the guys did a great job I mean I'm sure I can complain about some things but um, you know when it's all said and done it seemed to be pretty good and um, you know so just a, a true testament to the team the leadership everything that that uh, went on from our struggles that we've had here in the past to uh, getting better and uh, being able to be as dominant as we were tonight to uh, beat the guys that that ran so well here in the spring and um, just show that you know we're we're not letting down you know we've we've got capabilities of being able to um, fine tune some racetracks and get better at those places. Adam, uh, congratulations! Uh, certainly, uh, <clears throat> you and Kyle have teamed up to be quite a combination, uh, but. Uh, uh, have, have, have you, did you did you imagine that it would be this good that tonight uh, when you all got out of, got got the car out of there uh, yesterday? No, it, it's so tough to tell. Um, with the new tire combination, it kind of threw everybody for a loop, and I don't think anybody was completely happy with their car in practice. Um, we had decent speed, we knew that, uh, but then again, we were only putting eight or ten laps on our tires at a time. Nobody knew what it was going to do, forty or fifty or sixty or seventy laps on tires. Um, so we had to, you know, trust that uh, what Kyle was telling us is, is what was going on. And uh, thankfully, the track conditions didn't change too much. And, and what little bit of guesswork we had to do, we uh, just guessed right. And Steve, uh, congratulations. I know this is a, g a great win for uh, Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, continue to uh, <clears throat> show uh, excellence uh, on the racetrack. And just maybe just talk about uh, the performance tonight uh, of the 54 Toyota. Well, there's not much to say. Obviously, the guys did a great job, Adam and Kyle, and uh, I thought they really <clears throat> did know what they were doing. I'm surprised that Adam would say that, but <laughs> it was fun to watch them, and obviously uh, th they put together an excellent program today and tonight, and they executed well, and uh, the results prove out. Congratulations, and we'll take uh, questions now. Start over here on the far right with Hank Kurtz, and then we'll go to uh, JP here. Hey, Kyle, it had only been since May 31st that you won a race in the series, but eight starts since without winning, did that just seem like an eternity for you? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, there were some uh, some good races in there that we had opportunities to win that maybe we could have, should have, would have won, but uh, we, we didn't execute all the way and get what we needed, so we didn't win those races. But uh, tonight we were able to do that. And, you know, sometimes you look back on years and, um, you know, you're like, ah, well, we shouldn't have won races at that track. And, oh, well, you know, we should win at that track. And, oh, well, we we just can't run well at that one, you know. So this was one of the ones that we kind of circled as well. We don't really run well there, so we won't count that one. But um, to be able to get it tonight and, um, you know, and, and count it as a win is a, is a different racetrack than years past. So, um, you know, there's still opportunity for us to win more and, um, you know, close out the year strong. Let's go here to JP, and then we'll go to Bob Pockers. JP Beauchamp, Mac Local. Kyle, uh, can you tell me if you made any mental changes uh, since uh, the spring as far as your determination or attitude is coming into tonight's race? I have a follow-up question to that as well. 
Um, it's is it for like nationwide series or overall in general or what? Uh, for tonight's race. No, I mean, um, I hate saying it, but sometimes you're only as good as your equipment gives you, you know. So uh, you definitely have to have good cars. You have to have, um, you know, opportune situations that present themselves in order to be able to execute like we did tonight. I mean, the pit crew was awesome. You know, they were flawless. They didn't have any mistakes that came together. Um, out there on the racetrack, the car was really good, and, um, you know, that all came together. My restarts. Uh, somehow managed to be okay. Um, I thought I was doing a fine job, and um, you know those guys behind me were definitely getting to my inside. But um, you know I, I don't know that anything changed uh, for myself here in the spring to coming into this time around. I think that, um, like I said, I mean the spring race here we weren't as good as we wanted to be. We were definitely good today. That showed. And um, you know same to be said on the Cup side. I don't think we were very good here in the spring on the Cup side. We ran third and uh, with a late caution and um, you know tomorrow you know I don't expect us to be a winning car but um, you know hopefully we can run top 10 and um, you know have a solid night to get ourselves on track. Ten years ago in the spring uh, you took the pole and the win here in Richmond was any of that uh, reminiscent energy kind of in your mind or as you came into tonight's race? No uh, you know Again, you know, when you go through racetracks, there's times where you're dominant and you win at them. Like last year at Atlanta Cup Race, you know, we were pretty good. And then uh, just last week, we were horrible. You know, same racetrack, not a whole lot's changed, but um, just things happen like that. So sometimes it happens for the good, sometimes it happens for the bad. But, um, you know, 10 years ago here was, um, was my first start at the racetrack. It was uh, the fresh repave. Uh, it was the first race on the new asphalt. And uh, it was a fun night. You know, I remember that one being... Um, again, you know, qualifying on a pole, a new track record, and then, um, you know, leading them, I think, leading the most laps and being able to hold off Greg Biffle at the end of the race. So uh, it was a lot closer finish that night than it was tonight. Let's go to Bob Pockris and then to Stan Creekmore. You got a question, Dave? Okay. Uh, Bob Pockris, Sporting News. I want to say it had been since Kentucky Truck that you had won any race. Um, is it? Has the last two months been frustrating, and can this win kind of boost your morale going into the chase no matter what happens tomorrow night? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it has been a long time, and it has been. It's it's deteriorating to yourself and sometimes to your team and whatnot. you got to kind of keep yourself motivated and upbeat when you aren't winning races. But, um, you know, at the same time, we've had opportunities to win those races. We just haven't put it all together. So those are the most frustrating times, and those are the times that – you know, you need to lean on each other to try to make each other better and um, and get yourself back on track. So, uh, as far as the the future goes, you know, um, I don't know that tonight's win is anything for the chase. No, we we definitely need to get our cup program going and uh, get it stronger than what it is. It, all three of us sort of struggled today a little bit. Um, Denny hit a whale of a lap in order to get himself locked into the twelve to uh, to move on to qualify. Just you know, for the second round. Um, Matt and myself, we weren't as fortunate, so we'll just have to fight back from uh, starting a little deep in the field tomorrow night. And, and again, you know, the chase races, you we'll just have to um, again try. To, you try to work as hard as you can. I mean, when you unload and you're good and you're talking to your team, and or you can make changes and make your car better. You know, those are opportune times that uh, you know you're making progress. But um, you know, there's other situations too when you're running through practice and. Man, you're telling them the same thing over and over again. I mean, it's a broken record. You're just and you just can't fix it. You just can't get what you want out of the race car. And you know that if you could fix that problem, you'd be you'd be running as good as the, the leaders are or the quick cars are. But um, you know, it just doesn't always happen. Go ahead, Stanley. <clears throat> Stan Creekmore. Adam, how deep will your mind be picked tonight by the Sprint Cup side? Uh, considering the tires specifically and and Kyle I know you don't want to be real revealing but did you pick up something tonight that you think will help you significantly tomorrow night uh, just real quick I've already had a couple of text messages from the cup guys um, they're more interested in what we fought in practice and what we changed for the race and what direction the track went than they are any specific adjustment. Uh, anything specific probably wouldn't apply unless we did something with air pressure. Um, something like that would directly apply. But um, being that it is a new tire, 
um, there'll be a lot of emails and some phone calls back and forth for sure. And, and that is the uh, benefit of having a uh, multi-team, uh, multi-series uh, organization for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, there are a few things that we picked up tonight. You know, um, definitely moving around the racetrack, finding what happens in the different lanes of the racetrack. I never went as high as Kevin did. He went really, really high and was up, um, you know, up a lane off the wall. I never went that high. So that'll be new for me if I got to do that tomorrow. But um, besides that, you know, I just I really felt back to normal here with the race car tonight um, at Richmond, like, like what I've been here in the past, past races where I've been fast here, you know. Everybody was complaining about this tire, how it threw it for, threw them for a loop. But man, I was like, oh, this feels like home, you know. I'm back to knowing what I know here at Richmond, and uh, it looks good, feels good, you know. I actually look like I'm a genius, or Adam's a genius. One of us are geniuses, but um, you know, it all worked together. So I, I, I actually, so far tonight, like the tire. We'll see how all that plays out tomorrow, and if I'm, uh, if I'm not hating it by then. <laughs> Any additional questions? Hank, over here to the right. Kyle, when you've dominated the way you dominated tonight and you get a restart with 18 laps to go, do you allow yourself to think, holy crap, this would really suck if I didn't win on this on this restart? Yeah, that crosses your mind for sure. Um, you know, but you just think about the situation that in case something does happen, uh, somebody gets by you, you know, you just start thinking about, um, making sure if that situation happens, okay, just plan ahead. Don't don't get yourself um, too worked up and push the car too hard, burn the front tires off it or the rear tires off it, trying to get by them. You're just going to have to remember the pace you were just running through that whole 60, 80 lap run, whatever. It's a pace, and eventually you should be able to work your way back by that guy. So I planned all that ahead. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have to use it, but um, like I said earlier, uh, well, I guess I said it outside. Um, you know, the restarts, they're, they're a little tricky. Kevin got to my inside that one time, but, man, when you're on the inside like that underneath a guy, I mean, by the time turn one comes up, you've got to pinch it so tight on the bottom that um, you're really taking a big chance of slipping and getting into the guy that's on your outside that you're trying to pass and turning him and spinning him out. Um, fortunately, that didn't happen. Um, I tried to pinch him as much as I could and then try to give him as much room as feasible to uh, not have us all wreck. And then on that last restart, same thing. Chase got a good restart. I just I kind of went down to make sure that his front bumper stayed behind my rear bumper, and then I kind of got back up to try to get back into the corner. So um, all those things happen, and uh, they, they happen pretty quick. 